So hello everybody in the audience. Hello Chuck, hello Matis, Nathan and Mahaned. Um, I am your host today. My name is Natalie and I'm part of the marketing team here at Codapad. Thank you for taking the time to join us as we talk about how interviewers are leveraging ChatGPT to hire developers. My hope is that you'll leave this webinar with a better understanding of how you can use ChatGPT to improve your technical interviews and get a better read on developers' skills and potential. But before we dive in, I wanted to quickly share some practical information. Um, first things first, I'd like to introduce my colleague Alice, or Codapad, as you see her here. She is working behind the scenes, making sure that everything is running smoothly. If you need help with anything at all, you can reach out to her in the chat. Secondly, I'd like to remind you that this webinar is being recorded and that you will receive the recording after the event. Finally, there will be time for a Q&A session towards the end of the webinar. So if you have any questions for our expert panelists, please submit them in the Q&A tab. You can do so at any time throughout the webinar and we'll do our best to answer them all. After this quick introduction, we'll meet our wonderful panelists. We'll then get stuck into a roundtable style discussion before moving on to a live Q&A session. Now that's more than enough from me. So without further ado, let me introduce you to our pros. I'm joined today by Mohanid Asfour, Chuck Daminato, Nathan Sutter and Matisse Amel. Um, guys, do you think you could tell us a little bit about yourselves? Uh, let's start with Chuck, then Mohanad, then Nathan and Matisse. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Chuck Dominato. I'm a staff, staff, woo, staff software engineer at CircleCI. Suddenly has a cat on his lap. Um, apologies. I have been uh, doing this kind of thing for quite a few decades um, in Toronto, Ontario, working remote. But I've been I've done everything from systems administration, DevOps, SRE, software engineer or software support manager, product manager, that sort of thing. Um, but I just I love technology, learning about technology and helping people interface with it. Uh, my fun fact is I am an identical twin. Uh, he lives in a different city from me, but we have worked at five different companies together and counting. He is currently at where I used to work but joined after I left. So it must have been so confusing for your colleagues. <laughs> it was, it was a, a great to troll him as he started for sure. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome. Awesome. Uh, thanks for that, Chuck. So my name is Mohanad Asfour. I work uh, currently at Pinpoint. Um, I'm VP of engineering. Um, I, like Chuck said, I've been in this game for a long time, about over 10 years now. So just over a decade. Started at a startup. I worked at a Fortune 500 back at a startup and been in between freelance, did it at all, and um, learned a lot along the way. Uh, I've put on many hats. Um, I've uh, essentially learned, just like Chuck said, we've learned to do DevOps, support, software engineering, managing, you name it, we've done it all. Um, love technology, love working with technology, excited to see where this is going, especially with this whole AI uh, boom right now. Um, at Pinpoint, um, just to kind of give a little bit of uh, context there, we work with a lot of big data. Uh, we do a lot of analytics work. So Pinpoint is a platform that companies use. It's a location intelligence platform. So we're heavily vested in AI in terms of just seeing what it can do for us um, and even using it for our interviews. Uh, so it's, it's pretty awesome to be on this panel and I appreciate the, uh, the invite. Thank you for joining us. I think I was up next on the call sheet. Um, <laughs> I'm Nathan Sutter. Uh, I run, I'm responsible for the engineering team here at CoderPad. Um, I have uh, been building, running, managing teams for the last almost decade now at everything from a couple of people start up to large enterprises of a couple of hundred engineers and everything in between. Um, so I'm classically trained backend engineer. I've, I've got a uh, academic background in uh, artificial intelligence, which uh, which obviously uh, uh, is pertinent to this webinar. So um, super, super interested in seeing how this applies, obviously, to interviewing, obviously, to our product. 
um, and more broadly, how this uh, applies to the industry going forward. So super happy to be here, uh, very passionate about the topic. Um, so looking forward to the conversation. And I guess I'll be the last one. So I'm Mathis, uh, I'm based in Paris, France. Um, and at Coderpad, I'm in charge of developer relations. So basically chatting with all communities of um, software engineers in the world to get them to try our products and uh, publish some content. I have a background in competitive programming, cybersecurity. At some point, I used to be in the world's top 50, but now I'm retired. So I'm only coaching or organizing stuff, but I still really enjoy that. And also I do have a background in artificial intelligence. I used to be a machine learning engineer at uh, the Ministry of Defense in France, uh, specialized more on voice and text models. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we are very happy to have you all. Um, now that we are all acquainted, let's talk ChatGPT and technical interviews. Um, we're not going to take time to explain what ChatGPT is because I think that everybody who's here already knows. Um, but uh, yeah, I was going to ask you, Chuck, if you could get the ball rolling by telling us why you think ChatGPT should or shouldn't be used in tech interviews. Let's get straight into it. Yeah, thanks. Um, I feel like an evil genius here with the cat on the lot, <laughs> uh, channeling my inner bond. So one of the ways that we uh, where CCI currently evaluates candidates is we provide them with a relatively simple problem, but then it's it's a collaborative exercise to work through, you know, how, how to get from A to B, refactoring the code, whatever the case may be. And we encourage our applicants to to use Google to search for things. Let us know what you're looking for, like so we can follow along. Uh, we we don't expect everyone to come with all the tools memorized at, at their command. So using something like ChatGPT um, can make that process a bit smoother. So in whatever they input, we can see it in the interface. Uh, we're not searching slightly different things or getting slightly different results from Google per se, but it also would be like included in the history uh, when we go back. Um, and like, as an engineer myself, I find using tools like ChatGPT really it's it's remarkable i quickly get to an answer faster than i will with say stack overflow where i get you know the first link and i'm like oh it's not quite what i'm experiencing i go to the next link and like that's a six-year-old answer and four oh. versions of whatever the case may be so um I, I think the tools are here and they're going to be used so we should embrace it right thank you um does anybody else have uh thoughts on why it is a good idea to use um chat BT, chat gpt in interviews or does anybody have any thoughts on what the potential pitfalls are um i i can i can jump in and speak for you know maybe some of our customers that have uh as as you can expect a varied opinions on how appropriate it is or isn't to use uh, to chat gpt we have customers that you know think doing google searches are not appropriate at all for an interview setting we have customers who think that uh that using google search plus everything else in the world is totally appropriate and literally everything in between so um i don't know from my perspective i don't think there's anything negative to be brought to an interview setting by using a tool like chat gpt i mean it, 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 the, the entire purpose of a technical interview is to um, get a read on whether this person, one, would be able to solve the problems with other people in the organization, two, fit in reasonably well while doing so, and three, demonstrate their thought process. Um, and what you want to do is you want to give them as many tools as they possibly can that is going to replicate the on-the-job experience. And guess what? The on-the-job experience these days is searching on the internet for like, oh man, I forgot about this particular thing. Like, like, you know, this is written down somewhere. Let me go, let me go check the notes on this. And I don't know, ChatGPT is just, uh, as Chuck said, just a much easier and more elegant way to get there. Um, and, you know, having the history, which we'll show you in a little bit, um, at least with, uh, with uh, CoderPad's product is, you know, it's, it's great for the, the interview process uh, after the fact too. So I don't know, that's, that's where I sit. 
Yeah, I think definitely this part of making the interview realistic and like like you say, it's developers are going to use different resources every day in their job. They might as well be using them in the interview. There's no point really taking that out of context. Um, do do you think there are like I'm, I mean I'm insisting a little bit, but are there things that interviews should be wary of? Is there a is there a bad way to use ChatGPT in interviews? Um, is there anything that candidates could use it for that wouldn't be a good use or would be something to look out for? I think for anybody who's nervous about it, like, is there anything they can do wrong? <laughs> um, I don't know. I'll keep talking if nobody else is going to. I'm happy to take up all 50 minutes here. Um, so I don't know. From my perspective, I think we've seen, and, and I've seen candidates do this prior to ChatGPT being a thing, we have seen um, candidates use it in a way where they can get a little bit confused and frustrated with, with not getting the most direct answers. And typically it's around not really understanding where they're trying to go with it. And mm -hmm. it, it can confuse them, right? And this is not, this is no different than you know, setting up an interview without anything technical at all and a candidate being unclear about where they need to sort of steer an answer, right? Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, I could see it potentially confusing the situation even more um, because ChatGPT can be extremely verbose, right? Mm -hmm. um, which is mostly a good thing. Um, but if, if a candidate is sort of uh, panicking and not really knowing where to go um, and has a, you know, a, uh, uh, um, a interview panel that is looking at them for answers and also mm -hmm. you have this um, piece of AI that is telling you a bunch of things all at once it could be a little bit overwhelming so it could be like information Get overload, overload. Mm -hmm. yeah totally <laughs> yeah I think I can I, I can see that I guess obviously a good understanding obviously a clear interview um, question and interview setting uh, is essential and yeah even more so um, if candidates are going to be using that kind of resource, if they know where they're going, then they're going to be able to use it better. It'll be, it'll be more useful for them. Um, Nathan, you mentioned, um, and so Chuck, you mentioned also that the fact that you could have the notes from ChatGPT in the history of the interview, um, is something that was really useful. And Nathan, you mentioned an example. Do you think you could show us what that looks like um maybe screen share and just give us a bit of a look yeah yeah totally so um so for those who don't know this is this is the company plug portion of the webinar um for those who don't <laughs> know um we have um in a, a coderpad interview product we've built chat gpt um into the product um i will show you a sort of a toy example in just a minute um, but so, sort of we've built it into the interview experience. It's currently in opt-in in the product. But you know, if you are a paying customer, you have full access to a um, premium version of ChatGPT that, that then is played back in the, uh, in the interview process. So I am going to start to share my screen. Hopefully it works. Um, OK, everybody see my screen OK? See what looks like a CoderPad interview window? OK, cool. Um, so I'm just going to run you through a silly toy example. So this is, for those who are unfamiliar, this is the CoderPad interview window. This is a really silly toy question um, that is meant to be basic to, to sort of just get straight to the point. Um, so um, let's pretend that, um, and let me run this code to make sure it's still the execution environment. It's still all attached. Please and thank you. Good. Um, so this is, let's just pretend I'm in an in, 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 in an interview um, and, and I'm doing a Python interview and somebody is asking me to use NumPy, which is an extremely popular Python uh, library. And they're just asking me to do something simple like reshape an array, right? And so my prompt is take this one dimensional array and reshape it into a 2D array. Um, so we've got this cool AI assist tab and I'm like, oh God, I don't know how to remember how to do any of this. Um, and the interviewer, being a good interviewer, says, hey, just, you know, ask ChatGPT, I bet, bet you can get some help. So I would ask something like, um, can you remind me how to uh, reshape an array using NumPy? Um, and of course, the gardeners showed up right when I'm talking. So apologies for that if there's background noise. Um, so... Yeah, so I mean, this is exactly what you would expect. Um, it's it's going to give you a example. It's like, oh, okay, here's this, here's this, uh, you know, one D array. 
um, here's the original array and here's how you reshape it. And I go, oh, okay, cool. This is what I was looking for. I didn't remember the syntax and how to use that. So I could go like, what is it? MP dot reshape. Um, and then I want to reshape the original array and I want to reshape it into a two by three, which should work for this size. So I'm like, okay, cool. I think I, I think I remember how to do that. Let me run that again. Um, and I go, okay, cool. Great. I reshaped the array. Now I remember how to use that. And then hopefully, obviously this is not a full interview, but like hopefully the interviewer would build from there. And so when this, when this interview also ends, you get all of the execution history um, in addition to uh, the chat GPT uh, query history. So you can go through and see what they asked chat GPT, um, you know, uh, uh, afterwards, as well as, you know, what order of execution they did everything in, in the ID. So uh, I'm going to stop sharing. It's just a sort of a Hello. silly example, but yeah, go ahead. Just, so the um, what you were typing in as the candidate, so we were seeing the candidate's view. What would be the interviewer's view at that at that stage during the interview? The exact same thing. So you could you could follow along. So uh, those who are unfamiliar with the interview product, it is a completely synchronous experience. So you can have like I could share this slug out, and everyone I mean, we should have done that beforehand. Everyone could have jumped in and seen, seen what I've what I've done. Right. So it's, yeah, so it's completely collaborative and you can see like in real time what the candidate is um, typing into ChatGPT. You can see what ChatGPT answers and you can see what the candidate does with that, um, what they're gonna use, what they're gonna put aside. And potentially if they try a couple of prompts, um, you see how they adapt um, their prompts and how they kind of try to try to guide the, the AI assist. Um, so I guess, I guess we're saying that this would be a good um, way to use ChatGPT in an interview. Um, Mathis, do you have any other examples of what would be like a a green light or like what would be a good indicator um, of a, like how a candidate can use ChatGPT in an interview? Yeah, a, a developer who can use their tools and can demonstrate that they can use that efficiently it's a, it's a green light for me i i don't uh want to say that all engineer all software engineers should be able to code with chat gpt if they're more comfortable doing their own stuff with their own tools fine uh chat gpt of of course will bring more productivity to some some people um but yeah demonstrating um the that they can use their tool the right way and really understand because I think we need to put an emphasis on uh, understanding what the tool does for you. Mm -hmm. If you're just copy pasting uh, stuff from ChatGPT, you're not gonna go far. You're, the code is inevitably going to have problems very fast. And this is something that you may not be able to detect in an interview. So we need to change the way you, we interview uh, software engineers, but um, yeah, I've, um, if you're just using the tool without thinking about it, it's, it's going to cause issues, but otherwise I think most uses of chat GPT in the context, in, in the context of software engineering are green light for me. Okay. Is there anything that you would consider a red flag? Oh yeah. Well, uh, I mean, kind of the opposite of what I said, but also the, the job of the software engineer is you know, the word engineer is there for a reason. We need also to have some thinking, which for now is hard to um, swap for an AI. Mm -hmm. So for example, in, in an interview question, you are going to always have gray areas voluntarily left out by the interviewer so that the candidate can ask for more context, um, present some assumptions about uh, the data or the, the code that they're supposed to uh, work on which really demonstrates the job of, of a software engineer. Usually we see the job interview as like a complex problem that's asked in a very clear way, but actually the software engineer usually has to do the other way. Like it's a very easy problem, but it has so many layers of um, needing to, to dig into the problem and have like meetings with people to really understand what's needed actually. So this kind of context uh, is really needed and that's the heart of the job. And actually, I think it's going to be more and more central in the job interview uh, in the future. But yeah, if uh, 
basically if you're if you're coding interview question as a company if, if it can be solved by chat gpt you're doing that wrong or you don't need to hire developers you just need to hire an ai i guess okay <laughs> um i had a question for mohanid i was wondering if there was anything you would recommend um doing or putting in place um in order to facilitate the use of chat gpt in interviews um in order to make it effective and and um and yeah just to start doing it in interviews how would you get started so that's a great question because i've actually used it with candidates that i've interviewed so um just understanding like defining your goals just understanding what specific objectives you want to achieve by incorporating chat gpt like what are you mm -hmm. assessing the candidate for in the interview process um, you know, are they using it optimally for, you know, assess, uh, assisting with technical questions like was demonstrated by Nathan there? And then, and is it, in, <laughs> excuse me, is it enhancing the overall interview process? Is it a hindrance or is it a net positive, right? Like, uh, you know, Matthias mentioned, like, if you're using ChatGPT to solve the entire interview, then obviously this is the wrong use case for it entirely. Um, the other the other point I would also mention is to just become familiar with ChatGPT yourself as an interviewer, just understanding how it works, the capabilities, um, the limitations even, right? So um, experimenting with various questions, like we were given a good demo there to see, you know, could this question be solved entirely by ChatGPT or not, right? You, you don't want to give an interview where it's very tempting for a candidate to just use ChatGPT to solve the entire question. Um, yeah, so experimenting with the various questions, the scenarios to get a feel for the strengths and weaknesses and limitations of it. Um, also, I would just, I would prepare like the relevant questions and understand, you know, how often these, these uh, tools are being used and how they're being used. So if I were to put myself in, in the interviewer's shoes, um, how would I use ChatGPT? Would it be looked negatively upon the way I'm using it? Would it look be positive? Um, it, how does it differ from me Googling something as well? Like just understanding when it makes sense to use each tool. Um, mm -hmm. So these are the things that I think are very important in the interview process. And lastly, I just want to mention, um, and this is anecdotal, um, with the candidates, you do need to be transparent at the beginning to let them know that this is a tool that's there for them to use. And, you know, we're not going to knock points for them using it, or we prefer, you know, we're testing the waters to see if they actually use it or not, if they know how to code. They need to it's be in a comfortable, <laughs> exactly. It's it's not, you know, we're not putting setting bait there to catch them on something. They need to understand that, you know, we're giving them access to a tool to see how they use it to enhance um, their problem solving abilities and their critical thinking, right? Is ChatGPT is not going to tell you everything that's correct or, or you know, Chuck was mentioning earlier Stack Overflow threads that are six years old, right? You're not going to take that and be like, okay, this is has to be the solution. No, you have to use some thought and understand is what's being said here correct for my use case? Is this applicable? And that understanding component, I think, is paramount to, to the entire process. Right. Thank you. I think so many, so many valid points there. I think I'd I'd insist on um working with your TA team. Um, I think your your recruitment team, your 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 HR team, um, I think they can help you with preparing candidates for um, the interviews, with um, making sure that they have all the information beforehand, um, just making sure that the communication is, like you say, transparent um, and reassuring. And yeah, just making sure that everybody's on the same page, um, be it candidates and or um, the interviewing team. Um, just so everybody is aligned on evaluation criteria and uh, and use of ChatGPT. Um, and like you say, I think, yeah, it's a good idea to use ChatGPT for your interview questions, not for the first time in the interview <laughs> um, with a candidate in front of you. Um, so thank you. Thank you for that. Did anybody have anything they they wanted to add um, to what we've already discussed or shall we go straight to questions? Because I see we've got lots of questions. Um, yes, Chuck, please do. I, I just wanted to add something quick about like good and bad things we're looking for when, when we're interviewing. And one thing is, is how the candidate both phrases their questions and interprets the response. Mm -hmm. Like a bad smell for me would be, uh, can you refactor this code? They just copied in, like not good. Uh, or 
uh, a good thing is, um, you know, I know I can do this thing in JavaScript. Like how do, I know I can do an anonymous function in JavaScript, just don't remember the exact format. So can you just remind me how to do a closure or whatnot? Mm -hmm. uh, if they're like, can I do closures in JavaScript? Then I'm like, why would you pick that? You know, so it's it's a subtle thing. And, and this is no different in evaluating when we don't have a tool like Jet chat GPT in front of us. Uh, the benefit here is maybe a quicker like question to answer resolution timeframe, but also we get to see what's going on um, as opposed to them like not going to Google, but like messaging their buddy on WhatsApp and then just spouting whatever comes back. Right. Um, right. Like you say, I think it sort of gives a little bit more of a, a little bit more visibility into sort of a candidate's thought process. Um, what, what they, yeah, what, they know what they don't know, their problem solving skills. Um, so I think that's really interesting. It sort of just brings that to the interview. Um, and it's kind of something that would generally come out somewhere along the line. So it might as well be upfront in the interview. Um, so yeah, thank you for that. Um, was there anything else or shall we go to questions? Yeah, I've got I've got one more thing we've sort of tiptoed around a little bit um, that I think is important to mention. I think there's a lot of concern, um, both in industry and specifically with interviewing around like, oh, people can use AI assistance to quote unquote cheat, right? Mm -hmm. um, in interview settings. Personally, I think it's going to be somebody using ChatGPT or anything AI assist wise makes it much easier to weed out people who um, are reliant on complete copy paste or mostly copy paste solutions because they're gonna be much more confident. It's like, oh great, I've got this AI thing that I can ask in a live interview. It will be so apparent really, really quickly that they cannot reason their way through what they've copied and pasted in because of their increased confidence there. So, I mean, personally, I expect, and I've seen anecdotally, people use this as a crutch and it, backfire completely because their confidence level is so high. Um, what, what that does mean, though, is that, you know, interviewing teams really need to make sure they're not completely reliant upon, oh, hey, can I, can I give a candidate, for example, a take-home test and then um, have them submit it and me not really talk with them about how they got through the solution, right? So, um, so yeah, I think personally, um, uh, uh, getting more signal out of people who would, would quote unquote cheat, and maybe you wouldn't want to hire those people. Um, I think you're going to get that much quicker. At the same time, like if somebody can solve their way through an interview problem using mostly chat GPT, either your interview, interview questions are not good or relevant enough, or they're doing a great job. Um, right. And it's a hard question. And if they can, they can, they can do that, then great. So yeah, just wanted right. to add that about cheating. Right, and I think Matthew said that as well. So yeah, so if, if anybody was wondering if ChatGPT can answer all of the questions in your interview process, you're gonna have to go back to the drawing board. <laughs> um, and yeah, I think also I'd underline the importance of, I, I know Matthew, we discussed this as well, um, just in conversations before this webinar, is yeah, using ChatGPT is great and you would encourage candidates to do so, but you need to be ready to ask questions about whatever they're using from ChatGPT. So like you say, Nathan, if there's a big, big bit of copy and paste, why not? But you need to be able to ask questions about that and they need to be able to have sort of relevant answers um, just to show that they understand what they're, what they're using. Um, I am going to go to the questions because they have been coming in. Um, we've got lots in the chat, in the Q&A tab. Uh, thank you so much, Alice, for putting these in my doc here. Um, okay, we have a question from Alison um, who asks, what are candidates saying in your experience? How are they feeling about this chat GPT in interviews? If anybody wants to just raise their hand. <laughs> um, I can I can say a couple of things. Um, I know anecdotally, I think some candidates are surprised that um, these are even being built into interviewing tools like CodePad Interview. Um, 
because it is still a little bit persistent industry that people, you know, unfortunately, uh, Chuck's interviewing the right way, by the way, like if it, opening up Google to everybody as a part of the interview process replicates on the job experience, therefore is, you know, it's, it's, it's relevant, right? Like, I think candidates are surprised because there are many, many places that still do closed book interviews, right? Um, I mean, and so there's a little bit of surprise there. And I think, interviewing teams that embrace the idea of replicating as close to an on, on the job experience as possible, usually do a really, really good job prepping their candidates for, um, hey, we're, there's also gonna be a section where you can use ChatGPT to get into it. So, so the ones that I've at least anecdotally talked to are excited to be able to get closer to, you know, a normal real life experience in an interview. Mm -hmm. um, I, haven't, I haven't personally heard any negative feedback to be honest with you. Yeah, I, I would generally say that it's a good thing to tell your candidates that about um, your interviewing process and that ChatGPT is a part of it, or in any case that they are allowed to use resources. I think what developers want is an interview process that's realistic and relevant. Um, and yeah, giving them access to those resources is only is only helping them to, to do that. Um, I, I remember, Mahanid, you were saying something about um, sorry, before the webinar that some candidates are a little bit nervous, is what you were saying earlier about being transparent with them on just what exactly is being um, assessed. Uh, so I think some candidates can, can be a little bit nervous, um, feel a little bit like maybe mm -hmm. it's a trap. Um, so I think it's important to reassure them. I don't know if you have any specific feedback, um, Hannah, that you wanted to share. Um, just like ch kind of to echo what Chuck said earlier, we do tell our candidates, if you want to Google something, just please let us know. But uh, by the same token, um, I, I think it's just a matter of them getting comfortable with the tool and understanding that, you know, like we said, reassuring them being transparent. <clears throat> but also like furthermore than that to I think that some of them are a little hesitant because they're afraid to use the wrong prompt. And, you know, if I use the prompt, oh, how do I, you know, instantiate an array? He's going to think, you know, I, I don't know what I'm talking about or something. And, and, you know, it's you're nervous during interview. You could forget, you know, basic things like that. Um, so I think there's that aspect of it whereby, like, when they Google something, you don't really see it, right? They just tell you they're Googling it, but you have no idea what they're actually doing. But in this particular instance, you're seeing all their prompts and you're seeing what's happening between them and chat GPT. So I think there's a bit of hesitancy there just because of the, you know, the nervousness and the interview process. So I, I think that plays a factor. And, and the more and more, you know, that people are going to get comfortable with that tool being available. Um, I think it's just going to become like Googling at some point. Um, everyone's just going to take it as something that is there that I'm going to use. And, you know, there's no shame or anything with regards to using it. And it's definitely a tool that's here to help me, not hinder me, right? So that's, right. I think it's just about perspective, the, the shifting of perspectives there. Right, and I think I think that um, obviously being very careful not to, in, to give everybody the same information and not to introduce any bias in your interviews, but I think that possibly giving an example of the type of thing that you expect that they could um, look up or that the type of prompt that they could type in, um, I think would possibly reassure them that, oh, okay, oh, okay, I'm allowed to ask ChatGPT, that kind of thing. Like, I'm allowed to forget that or to want a reminder. Um, but yeah, in any case, I think communication, transparency, and reassuring your candidates. Um, so I have a question from Mary. Uh, let's say a developer is savvy with ChatGPT. How would an interviewer know if the candidate is coding from scratch or utilizing the tool to answer the coding question? What are the red flags here? And I think I'd tie that with a question from Jamie, uh, who says, if, uh, what if the candidate is using ChatGPT outside of Codepad in a different window secretly to solve the coding question, uh, how best to detect or address this? I I can take this one um, first. Um, yeah, I would say that there's uh, first uh, to answer the last questions about like secretly using ChatGPT. If you clearly say you can use ChatGPT in any way you want, you the candidate doesn't really need to hide the fact that they're using it. Um, uh, so if you're using Codepad, there's like the integration. There's not really a point where they they would want to hide what they're typing. Um, 
Because yeah, if if you if the candidate can understand and explain what the AI is producing, I would say, I I do, really do not care if that's the candidate who wrote that or the the AI based on the prompt. Uh, if the if the question is well made, of course, and all that. Uh, but assuming that, and so yeah, if uh, if we we don't really need to dissociate um, between that code and that code. But uh, if you have a doubt, it's always a good thing to ask them to explain what they did or what the AI did uh, to make sure that everything is understood. Uh, one also quick digression, but I also um, love cybersecurity and I've, I've uh, done a few experiments and these LLMs are notably bad at security and writing secure code. So it could be a good thing to make them double check and even like make kind of a trick question that can be solved in a wrong way and ask them, do you notice anything wrong? Um, something like this to really make sure also they have a deeper understanding than just the code, but also things that are like um, good practices in development and secure coding and all that kind of stuff that make the software engineering job uh, job not yet replaced by AI. Right. Right. So I think you're going to you're going to see, obviously, if there's something that's copied and pasted in a big, a big paste, then you're going to see that that's come from somewhere else. Um, potentially, yes, candidates could be using ChatGPT and then typing in using the same thing. Have, they have multiple screens. But like you say, Metis, even if they it doesn't really matter where the code comes from, as long as they understand what they're what they're typing, what they're submitting and they can answer questions, they can develop, they can um, adjust, et cetera. Yes. <laughs> Chuck. Um, a great signal is like chat GPT is imperfect. It, it's not going to necessarily give you the right answer or even a correctly formulated answer. And a great signal will be uh, if a candidate takes some pieces of code and it doesn't work and how they react mm -hmm. to the errors or the bugs. Um, I've had chat GPT tell me to use libraries that don't exist or method signatures that aren't in the library or in a version that exists anymore or whatever. So um, it's those reactions that are a great indicator of, of deeper understanding as Matisse was talking about. And to, yes. to follow up on that, uh, a good interview format would be debugging interview. So you provide the candidate with a code that has an issue and ask them to find find it. So you describe it in Broadway and they have to find it, fix it and like write the, the patch and stuff. And it's also a great way to really make someone demonstrate their skills. And this is something that the AI has a lot of trouble doing. Um, so you can point it in kind of the right direction, but in the end, humans really are better than the AI uh, to do this, this kind of tasks right now. One thing I just want to jump in, sorry to interject. Um, one thing I like to do during the interview when they, you know, during the process, let's say they did use ChatGPT secretly and they typed in the solution. I always like to ask them, is this the most optimal solution? If so, why or why not? And that really exposes if they do understand what they wrote, number one. And number two, if they can actually refactor the code itself, right? And see if there's a more optimal way of doing it and being able to communicate that as well. Like articulation of that is key to me understanding if they do understand what ChatGPT gave them or did they just do a copy paste job, right? So I, I like to always add that in there um, just to see if the candidate is thinking in the most optimal way and if they do understand the solution that they are currently uh, working on right and if they have that skill of sort of critical thinking and and analysis that you really need um i have a couple of questions about um chat gpt being used by developers kind of in everyday um in an everyday work environment um can chat gpt be too much of a crutch for developers um, is it possible that this creates engineers to be too reliant on it? Um, I think this is, yeah, either in interviews or just day to day. Uh, are they going to be losing skills because they have this crutch? I am. I'm going to force my way into an answer here. So I've I've been around since the days of, and I and I, <laughs> Chuck, 
I'll, I'll try to keep it short because I, I know we all have a lot of thoughts here. I've been around. I still remember my first office mate in my first professional job out of academia. I brought in um, a couple of O'Reilly books. Those who don't remember what those are, they're the, the, you know, they had cookbooks for what they still have them, but nobody really uses them. Um, they had an animal on the front and there were good, they're great manuals to start with. This was before like library information was on the internet and the cookbooks were really, really helpful. And I still, I still vividly remember this. My colleague was like, well, why, like you're cheating now. Why would you use that? Like, like you should, you should just work yourself through these things all naturally or absorb tribal information here at the organization to understand this stuff. And so my response to so fast forward, like 15 years, right? Like my response to, uh, can you use that too much of a, a, as a crutch? Like, I personally don't think so. Um, if the tools are available, like anybody who is, who is good at their job is going to use whatever tools are, that are available to make their job the most efficient possible and should continue to do so. Like, this is why I'm such a huge fan of, um, of Copilot. Copilot is an incredible tool for developers. Like I happily pay for that out of my pocket just to mess around on the side, right? It is such a great tool. ChatGPT the same. Um, so I don't know, I have a very visceral reaction to, to like, is this a, too much of a crutch? Because I've seen this argument made in different forms like every five years um, with the, as it pertains to a different technology. I'll, I'll have a contrasted opinion on that. Uh, Cause yes, I mean this, uh... For developers, I think it's great to like remind you of uh, even the basic stuff. But for students, I'm a bit afraid. I, I used to teach um, algorithms classes in in uh, university, and it it makes me kind of scared to give that kind of opportunity to students that they will use that more than necessary. And it's very easy. Uh, sorry, it's very hard to detect when a student turns in an assignment written with heavy use of that kind of stuff. And yeah, it's uh, it's going to make some people, as you were saying earlier, like very confident in their abilities. And they're like, yeah, I have super high grades all the time. Yeah, but mm -hmm. you're not really understanding what you are learning, actually. It's as if like you were allowing um, in, in math classes all grades to use like a, a very high performance uh, calculator or like Wolfram Alpha or like computing uh, engines to solve the most easy stuff that you need to learn, like a multiplications. If you never like get your hands dirty and learn that the hard way, I'm not advocating for like doing that your whole life, but you need actually to learn the basics, the basics before you are like automating your, your mm. stuff. I think um, before I, I I ask you, Chuck, if you want to um, share your thoughts on the subject, I'm just going to tie it in with another question, which is kind of along the same lines. Um, but um, someone from the audience says, uh, do you think AI tools will lower the skill level for entry level developers in the future and eventually lead to a lack of senior developers at today's standard of expertise? So Nathan covered most of what I wanted to say very succinctly, which is great. Um, you know, I, I again, seeing things from a long career, like if, if we're concerned about these tools, why do we even use IDEs? In, in fact, why do we even have an end curses environment and should just be Edlin and doing it a lot of the time? Like you can be reductive like that. Um, I, I, and I think if, people are learning the fundamentals and this sort of goes to what Matisse was saying. If they know the first principles, then if their tools fail, they can still, they can still develop, they can still exceed. Mm -hmm. And I don't feel that we'll have this cohort of developers that, that just are regurgitating whatever the robot is telling them because you'll quickly be able to separate the wheat from the shaft. People who are able to think creatively and, and those that that approach will not will not fly. It'll it'll quickly quell down um, because there needs to be some kind of reasoning in the process going from you know whatever the machine is telling you to like what you know is feasible or what you can do. It's a garbage in, garbage out kind of scenario. Um, and if you're getting garbage, then you're not going to get promoted. 
he might even get let go and you'll find candidates that can actually do in reason. Uh, and I, I don't think it'll be too hard. I mean, you, you look at the, the current generation of people who are raised on iPads and they're not like my own son. Like he's not he's not an idiot because he, <laughs> I was he in the world not, they're not stupid with, but i didn't like, dare say that <laughs> like, <laughs> it's just he's there's no I, I don't think there's a an inherent handicap being developed with the, these new tools it's just different ways of thinking and approaching the world that you live in with these new tools right um i have a few questions around um interviews uh around interviewing around prepping for interviews uh, so I'm, I'm really sorry if I mispronounce your name, but Sashin or Sashin, um, asks, uh, how you're using, uh, chat GPT, what prompts you're using to, uh, generate interview questions, for example, or are you using chat GPT to get a summary of your chats with the candidate, um, to get a more well-worded feedback, um, I'm just looking if there was another question I could tie this in with. Uh, but yeah, there are a few questions we'll come back to, but um, basically around how how you can use ChatGPT as an interviewer um, to improve your technical interviews. I, I think I could take this one because I've, I've used it. So one thing to note, um, our interview process is actually split into two. So first is the technical screening where we use CoderPad. Uh, we have them solve a, a problem whether it be Python or React or whatever it may be, depending on the role. Um, the second part is a discussion interview. And to vet if the questions are, let's say realistic for the role, um, we actually input into ChatGPT and see what kind of answers it gives back to it. And that becomes sort of the compare and contrast with the candidate. So a common thing that we, we, we do in some of the questions, like we have a particular question where we ask them, how would you end-to-end -end build, you know, a certain web app, like what would use for the back end, front end, and kind of talk through it. Um, and then we have a really open-ended question at the at the end of that one. We say, is there anything that was missed? And this kind of prompts the candidate to think like, okay, we were all the bases covered when I talked about like backup, redundancy, scalability, and so on. Um, the common theme that we've actually found is that most people forget about security, which is critical when you have user data. Um, but ChatGPT actually mentions that, which is interesting when we say, is there anything that was missed? And it, it comes up with that answer. So, and other answers as well, but this is a good um, criteria for us to gauge uh, each, you know, candidate and just see like, okay, how comprehensive is, are the answers that are given compared to this, you know, uh, LLM it, that's giving us these answers. And mm -hmm. it's a good gauge to kind of give us a realistic standard, right? So, maybe things that we particularly missed thinking about that, because it is an open-ended question, it's very subjective, um, just using ChatGPT in that sense gives us a semblance of, you know what, we didn't even think about that. That'd be, you know, bonus points if a candidate actually got this one. Um, so we've been using it in that way, and we found it to be very useful in, in that sense. Great. Thank you. Yeah, that's a really interesting use case. Um, I'm looking at the questions. Uh, from the interview. Okay, so here's a question about um, how you could use ChatGPT to screen um, CVs, resumes. Uh, so a use case, so a use case I think can be would be useful uh, from an interviewing point of view is uploading a GD, 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 sorry, and candidate resume and see if he she could be a good fit or not. Um, are there tools that enable this? as ChatGPT is just text-based. Are there other AI tools that allow you to do this? And is it a good idea? Uh, I will take the latter question first. Uh, whether it's a good idea depends on what you're trying to solve for. If you're just trying to solve for your top of funnel, maybe you know it's a it's a job posting you get you know eight thousand resumes for or something. You're like, oh my god, there's no way I'm going to be able to go through all of these things. Um, I would say that. Um, you could use it, but the pro and as somebody who's used ChatGPT to help with other problems and summarizing and help me helping me solve other problems outside of software engineering in life, like you have to be very very specific with with the um, the the language model for it to be helpful to you. So um, 
if you would do something like, um, hey, here's the format of a, J a JD, um, here, um, uh, here is the format of the, um, the skills that I need uh, to even consider someone to be screened for this. Um, now, please do the intersection of those two things. You could do that. And there's like, if you have all of these things in PDF form, there are multiple ways to either feed a PDF into ChatGPT with some libraries or just do PDF to text and it'll work just fine as well. Um, so you can totally do that um, uh, if, if volume is a problem. Um, whether you want to do that or not is a completely different question. Um, and I would say completely up to the person trying to solve this problem. Um, but yeah, I've, I've used it for similar things. I think the other things I've used it for not related to screening upstream are, um, I've seen colleagues use it for um, having, you know, five candidates answer, answer the same question and have ChatGPT summarize the differences between their solutions, uh, which sort of highlights things that you don't see um, uh, by just putting these five things up next to each other. And you're like, oh, hey, this person solved this in, in an interesting way. So like, Things like that are super easy and don't actually require a lot of um, uh, uh, a priori information for ChatGPT to be useful. Screening resumes, like you can do it, but you know it depends what kind of problem you're trying to solve, I suppose. Um, I mean, I could shamelessly say that rather than asking ChatGPT or an AI tool to screen resumes, I would send a screening test. Um, but that was not the question. <laughs> Um, there are a couple of questions also around bias. We are coming to the end um, of the webinar, but I think we have time for maybe one or two more questions. Um, do you think that using ChatGPT in interviews will lead to more false negatives? Um, so weeding out someone who was actually qualified or less false negatives, uh, more false positives or less? Um, I would say probably less just because of the, the point I mentioned before, which was um, the people who are going to be confident in, hey, I can just copy and paste something live here because, for example, ChatGPT is built into interview. They're going to be flagged much quicker and their inability to think their way through a problem is going to be much clearer, much quicker. And it's going to be, it, from my point of view, uh, less of a waste of time for the interviewing panel because it'll be very, very clear that this person can't um, reason their way out of a paper bag very quickly. Um, so for me, that will actually reduce wasted time um, and reduce false positives um, from my perspective. I'm sure there are other instances um, that people can think of that uh, are the other way around, but I think that's that's the one that, that comes up in my mind for sure. Um... I've also got a question that just came in. They've got, there've been a few questions around um, the Codepad integration. Uh, I, I, I'm not going to go into all the details now, but I will try and get back to all of those people just to give you, um, so these are people that are in the product that are customers, um, just to make sure that you understand how you can use it. Um, so I will try and get back to you asynchronously, but I do have a question from Sudhir, which is, are you seeing a world where Codepad would use a chat GPT to conduct a first round of an interview with no human monitoring, um, but simply a summary of what happened? I'm not sure how public this is, but we are <laughs> <public>. tinkering <laughs> with some stuff internally. Um, I'm not sure, Nathan. Uh, what, what you more say. details Care you can give? Careful. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, but what you're describing is basically giving an asynchronous interview uh, with some kind of interaction. So, hmm. um, and, and say... having ChatGPT grade the candidate after, which are tools that uh, ChatGPT can uh, very much do. So, hmm. yeah, we, we can reach that kind of thing right now. Yeah, I'd say maybe. Um... Uh, question for Mohaned or Chuck, um, just in general, outside of Codepad, do you see the interview process going that way? Um, like having an AI, a first AI interview with no human interaction, um, a tech, specifically in tech recruiting? I think it can help in the um, 
in the, the first phase, it, usually we have a recruiter who like technical recruiter has a script and maybe some light technical questions who may ne not themselves be technical and, and may there may be a poor uh, signal to noise ratio as a result where someone gives a technically accurate answer but is missed because it doesn't follow the script, whereas an AI sort of either helper or interaction uh, <clears throat> may have a, a deeper context, uh, but maybe not as a replacement for that step, but as um, an adjunct or maybe like a, um, you know, just to, just to boost your signal. But I, I think it would be, I don't see anything necessarily wrong with this. It may be just a bit impersonal. I mean, if I was mm -hmm. asked to. I, yeah, I, I wanted to raise yeah, a point that awesome. we're kind of forgetting. It's a candidate experience. And candidates, they love to talk to people. And that's also one thing that sometimes they don't like about screening interviews. And they they enjoy more like having pair programming stuff because they chat with a human and they feel really like like a human, like a human candidate and not like a line, a, a row in a database of candidates and where like everything is automated. So mm -hmm. I would be careful treading in that uh, water. I would just add really quickly, <clears throat> I think the human element is really important in the sense that, you know, when you're communicating with another person, there's body language, there's, you know, communication skills, confidence, you know, those kinds of things are only gauged properly by human. I I feel at this point, like, you know, ChatGPT is great for assessing maybe technical ability, but purely technical ability. But um, you know, the other aspects of what makes us human, right, and not AI, um, those are very very important skills as well. Like those soft skills count for a lot because mm -hmm. you could be a genius, but you you know you have poor communication skills. You're you're not systematic in your thinking. That kind of stuff shows um, when you're interacting with another human being. And I think that could get lost if we just completely delegate things to AI. Um, so yeah, in my in my humble opinion, I would just say that, you know, that initial reach out and that initial touch point of human contact is, is still very, very important. Right. And I think we can, so we're, we're at time just about, um, but I think that's a great um, point to finish on. I think that yes, uh, candidate experience is is so important in your recruitment process. Um, even if you're yeah using AI, embracing new tools is great. Technology is wonderful, but don't forget your candidate. Um, don't forget that they also want to get a feel for who you are, who the company is, who they're interviewing for. Um, so I think that that's yeah a great a great finishing note. Um, I'd like to thank our panelists and I'd like to thank everybody that joined us today there has been so many questions unfortunately we weren't able to answer them all live um, but we already have a fair few uh, blog articles on the Codepad blog on uh, chat GPT interviewing technical interviewing etc and I will try and answer as many questions in a Q&A article um, in the in the following days weeks um, so that we can get some answers to you but thank you so much for the engagement. Thank you so much for joining in. And thank you again to all of our panelists. Thank you and have a great day, evening, wherever you are. <laughs>